So it is my very great pleasure to welcome uh, Katie Hansvik to our uh, webinar today to join us. Um, so let me see if I can't get Katie unmuted here. There you go. Hi, Katie. Can you hear Hi, me everyone. okay? Yes, I can. Hello. Uh, great. Um, so Katie, um, that's great. So I'm gonna let me go ahead and give control to you so you can show um, what folks are needing to see in your so let me quickly make you a presenter here, and it's going to switch your desktop. Um, and that should move us over to your screen. All right. Can you see my screen? We can indeed. Give me a second here. Excellent. Let me get that repositioned here. Okay, great. So it's now, it's all you. All I will right. just be quiet now and let you do your speaking here, so. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, happy Tuesday, everyone, and thanks so much for joining this webinar today. Like Joshua shared, my name is Katie, and I'm with Vanco. I'm a marketing manager at Vanco, and I've been with Vanco for over eight years, and I've kind of been in a variety of different departments. So I'm excited to share with you some of my favorite reports and reports that I think you'll find really helpful. So I want to introduce to you the My Vanco Service Center. Some of you on this uh, call today have probably been Vanco clients for several years and are really familiar with our uh, online service center, whereas others of you may be uh, fairly new. So I just want to take a few minutes to run through some of our most common or useful reports. So when you're in the My Vanco Service Center, there are two areas where you can look at reports. The first one I want to show you today is processing reports. And you'll find processing reports by going to the credit, debit, e-check, electronic funds transfer tab. Once you've clicked this tab, you'll hover over reports. And that's where you'll find processing reports. Think of processing reports as auto-generated reports. So these are reports that are emailed to you on a weekly, daily, monthly basis. And they're also saved in here. So never worry if you can't find a report that you found in your email. You can always find it right here in the My Vanco Service Center. The first report I want to show you in processing reports is the monthly activity report with detail. So I'm going to scroll all the way down. Keep in mind, I'm showing you a demo account today, so I have a lot more reports than you'll typically have. I'll click Search. And here's the monthly activity report with detail that was generated on May 1st. And again, this was emailed to you, but it's also saved in here as well. Think of the monthly activity report with detail as a catch-all report that details everything from the prior month. So let's open it up so you can see exactly what we're looking at here. So what I really like about this report is at the top, it shows everything uh, that you received regardless of payment methods. So there's two different types of payment methods, either from checking and savings account, which is also considered ACH or synonymous with ACH. There's also uh, credit and uh, debit card giving as well. So it'll show everything from uh, ACH and credit and debit cards. And then it details everything by fund. This is what I really like. So often when uh, churches have online giving available for their churches, for, or for their members, for example, you make it uh, available for members to give to a variety of different funds. So in this demo account, you'll see that we have one fund called Baptism, Wedding, and Funeral. And then we have another fund called Holy Land Collection. So for that entire month, it will show all the gifts that were received for that, for each fund. I think this is great um, information that you can always share with your stewardship council, or your finance council, as many of them may be curious about which funds are most popular or being used the most and uh, the total gifts. So you'll see right here again, it recaps it for you. For baptism, wedding, and funeral, there's the gross amount, and then there's the fees, and then the total amount. Keep in mind, again, this is a demo account. So in your, if you're looking at this from your computer, there would be transaction fees and discount fees there. Again, at the end, um, it gives you the detailed grand report. So for everything in April, it'll show you everything you received via ACH. 
They'll also show you everything you receive from merchant services, which is just another word for credit and debit card giving, and it would detail it right here. This report is usually pretty long. It offers everything. Again, with my demo account, I don't have as many uh, donations in it as you would likely have with your church. But I love this report. It shows everything you need from the prior month. It's also generated on a weekly basis, too. So we also offer for you the weekly activity report with detail, which is a slimmed down version of the monthly activity report with detail. And uh, keep in mind, the weekly activity report with detail is generated every Saturday for that week prior. All right, so that was monthly activity report. Again, it can be found in processing reports. One other item I want to show you that's available in processing reports is the monthly invoice. I don't have an active invoice to show you, so I'm going to show you a PDF here. Again, this is the monthly invoice. It's generated at the beginning of the month for the prior month. It'll show you everything for um, electronic funds transfer or checking or savings account. E-check is just another word for uh, donations from checking or savings account. It'll show your total charges here. You're charged um, at month end for any checking or savings account donations. For credit and debit card transactions, you're actually charged at the time of the transaction, and Vanco batches those. So let's say today you received uh, 10 donations from uh, members' uh, credit and debit cards, you'd be batched for those 10 donations. So uh, the only item you'll find on your invoice for credit and debit card transactions are any failed transactions. So for example, maybe your members mistyped uh, their credit or debit card number, for example, or entered the wrong expiration date. And then at the bottom, any miscellaneous fees. So to, this is where uh, your monthly fee for Vanco will be listed as well. If you have any particular questions about invoicing, I know invoice can be a little tricky, especially as you're getting started with Vanco. I encourage you to contact Vanco's client services department. Uh, the number uh, is 800-675-7430. You can also find it on our website, vancopayments.com. But the client service department is extremely helpful. Answer any questions you have on reporting as well as invoicing. There's one more report Katie, I, I have wanna... a question for you. Absolutely. So just because it was asked previously is, not everyone gets the reports via email. Is there any way that you could possibly show how they could request that if they're currently not getting those? Yes, yeah, so there's a couple. Um, every uh, user or every church of Vanco, um, there's a, think of an administrator on the account, and then that administrator can give other staff member access to those re reports. Um, I don't have access to it in our demo account, but again, our client services department would be happy to um, help your administrator or other staff members get access to those reports. Great question. Okay, so they can actually either contact you or go online and enable getting those reports emailed to them if they need to, if yes. they choose to. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Sorry, yeah. go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. That was a great question. Thanks for asking. So I've shown you processing reports. Again, think of these as auto-generated reports that are emailed to you but also saved in the MyVanco Service Center. We're going to move down now to report generator. And think of report generator as an area where you can come and customize your reports further. So couple di several different reports here that you can uh, use to customize. You can choose payment type. You can uh, select which funds. So Sunday giving, vacation Bible school, fall festival, uh, you name it, all the funds that you have available here. And then you can select your date range again. So I'm going to come here to daily processing report. I'm going to go down to processing date range. Some churches like this report because they can uh, select the, uh, show the report for just those gifts that they're receiving today on the 26th. Since it's early in the morning yet, uh, we don't have any uh, new donations yet. So I'm going to change this back to May 20th. And here is the daily processing report. 
Again, I'm in a demo account, so you'll see Amelia has made so many gifts, uh, but you'll see the pr uh, processing date of May 20th, which fund she gave to, and then that amount. These are all credit and debit card donations. However, if Amelia or any other uh, staff member at the church gave using their checking or savings account, uh, you'd find those under ACH processing. Any declines, and then um, refunds, et cetera. So that's all I have for you today, those three reports. However, Vanco offers dozens and dozens of reports. So if you can't find what you're looking for, give us a call. We'd be happy to help you navigate the service center further. So Joshua, if that's um, all that you have, I will go on mute. But again, let us know if you have any questions. We're happy to help. Great. Thank you, Katie. We really appreciate the support and help. Yeah, you can go ahead and just switch me back to a presenter. That would be great, please. Okay, so now the work is up to me, folks. So thank you, Katie, for that. Appreciate it. Um, okay, so there's a few things that I've learned in preparing for this particular webinar that I wanted to kind of share with folks with regards to, you know, with when working with the Vanco folks um, about preparing for this because the real crux of the webinar event was about posting and dealing with Vanco fees in church windows. And where that occurs as being the sort of the most treacherous or tricky as the case may be is when we're dealing with it, when we're transferring the donations from the donations module into our accounting system is so the two things that I, there's things that I really learned about this. First of all, I definitely think there are some distinct reports that I think, and Katie showed one of them in, the, in, what, in her portion of the webinar when she was talking about the weekly, the weekly activity report. They also have what's called a monthly activity report, and I think it really, which one of those reports best suits you, is based on how often you complete the imports from the Vanco system into Church Windows donations and then subsequently transfer it into accounting. If you do that on a weekly basis, the weekly activity report in Vanco system may be better. If you do them on a monthly basis, then perhaps the monthly activity report is the report that best suits you. So I've got an example of that brought up here. So I'm going to bring up that PDF file here and I'm going to show you because the other thing that I learned about it when working with them on this and preparing for this is that the ACH deposits or, you know, uh, e-checks would be the other way that I learned about that. Basically, they're direct debits from uh, a giver's bank account into the, into the Vanco system versus a credit card or a debit card transaction. How those transactions are detailed is really what determines what we need to do when transferring the donations into accounting. So why I'm bringing up this report is because I want to show how this report really helpfully identif helps us identify which transactions are which. The ACH, ACH transactions are always going to be the gross amount. So right here it shows our ACH deposit record detail, report record detail, right here, which shows we received $150 um, on this February date or on this particular date and that's how much we're going to show in donations, and that's how much it's going to be affecting in our cash account, okay? Meanwhile, down here, we have our merchant services or our credit card transactions, which the church windows is still going to increase, you know, import the gross amount of $100, but the amount that's going to be affecting our cash account is over here on the left. So we do have fees to deal with in that case, okay? So... You need to know which transactions you can transfer directly from donations into your checking account versus which ones you may have to transfer into your into a Vanco holding or clearing account to then post those fees. Okay, so I've got a couple batches here in donations that I've I'm going to minimize that, or I've got a couple of some batches here that I've I've created or imported that I'm now preparing to transfer into my accounting module that's going to show an example of where this becomes really, really important, okay? So we're going to go right up to accounting here, transfer donations. It shows multiple batches that I've imported from donations for the month of April 
that are different types of transactions, okay? Some of these are ACH where fees are not assessed. I can transfer them into accounting because the deposit, as it's recorded in donations and are imported from VanCoin to donations and transferred into accounting, matches what will show up on our bank statement each month, and some of them won't. So that's where we then need to involve that, so our, our clearing account or holding account, as it were. So if we're right here, we look at our 4-7 April 7th batch. This is a credit card transaction or debit card transaction. So the amount of $35 is not what we're receiving in our checking account. So we are now going to have to change that and post that into our Vanco clearing. So right here, once I click the, you know, the down arrow or the plus sign and expand that, it shows that it's trying to go into my debit account of my Huntington Bank checking. Well, that's not going to work because I'm not receiving or showing $35 on my bank statement for that deposit on that date, okay? So I'm going to do a temporary override of that, and I'm going to change that to my Vanco holding account, the account that I've set up to receive the gross amount to which then I will post my fees, and then transfer the balance into checking for the amount of my deposit. So I'm going to just change that to Vanco Holding, and I'm now going to click on Transfer Post. It now says, okay, here I'm going to put it into my Vanco Holding asset and into my general ties and offerings for the amount that I had actually received. Oh, I mean, okay, that I'm that that into my uh, $35 into my general ties and offering income account. So I can enter comments here if I wish. For time purposes, we're going to bypass that. It then refers me back to my transfer donations into account, you know, my posted transfers tab to print the report if I wish. We're going to click OK on that. Now we're going to look at our April 15th batch, okay? These, per my weekly or monthly activity report from Vanco, tells me that these are all e-checks or ACH transactions where no fees are assessed. Those are dealt with at the end of the month when I receive the invoice from the Vanco system. So I can post these directly into my Huntington Bank checking account because I've received $1,000 in my deposit. The fees will then be dealt with when I'm preparing to, to pay Vanco when I receive their invoice, okay? So I don't need to change the asset on these. These can go right into my default Huntington Bank checking. I don't need to change anything. I'm just going to go ahead and click post, okay? Same thing pops up, I can enter comments if I wish, and I click post, okay? Reference me back to the posted transfers to print if I wish. Now, this transaction is one where it becomes a little, perhaps a little bit. Now, while these may be rare, they might occur where you've got a batch that's for, imported from Vanco that includes a combination of both e, e, oh, sorry, uh, debit card or credit card transactions and ACH entries, okay? In those particular types of situations, you still have to transfer it into the Vanco holding account, okay? Because in this case, it's not letting us split that out and post those into the two separate assets when they all went into donations at one time, okay? So even if there's a partial, you know, merchant services fees assessed and some that where they're ACH and they're not, you still got to put it into the Vanco holding asset account, okay? Same thing. I'm going to throw all $550 into that Vanco holding account. Then I can go into accounting, post my merchant services fees, anything I need to, and then do my transfer into checking, okay? And I'll do post again. All right? So, again, it all depends. So the cardinal rule here, folks, is you've got to let your bank statement or follow your cash you got to let that be your guide, okay? You, there's nothing wrong if you decide to go, oh, I'm going to throw it all into my Vanco holding account, and then if you need to, transfer it into your checking account, okay, if you're unsure about that. Our final land transaction we're going to do for April here is on April 28th, where, yes, again, it's a $40 credit card transaction. That is not the amount I'm receiving in my deposit and checking. I can now go here and choose my Vanco holding account and click Post. All of the donations now for my Vanco holding are now transferred for April into there where it's warranted, okay? So now, when I've now transferred all those batches, I can now go come in here and go, okay, I'm going to do transactions where I'm going to transfer those balances or journal entry those monies, um, you know, debiting my, you know, a Vanco fees expense. I can do it on a per transaction basis. I could do it on a 
lump sum basis at the end of the month, the choice is really yours, okay? As we state, on every one of these webinar events that we do, that we record on these, the purpose of that VanCo holding asset account is to end the day with a zero balance, okay? So whether I choose to do it based on, you know, an April 7th for my credit, I can do it on an April, you know, if I want to go, okay, my transaction fee on that was my, you know, so I'm going to, I've set up a VanCo, not a VanCo fees expense, a e-giving expense account. So if I choose my e-giving, it's really up to you in terms of how you record these folks. So let's say it was a $2.35 expense for the, that credit card transaction. So I now click the down arrow, I choose my Vanco holding account, and then I choose the credit for the $2.35, essentially reducing that, you know, and I'll do fees. I do done add to batch. I do show running balance in the upper right. We now show that our Vanco fees expense is being charged for $2.35. The Vanco holding account is lower by $2.35. Okay, so I can now post that. Or I could actually do my transfer using the journal entry here too. So what I could do is I could do a credit to my Vanco holding account. I could do that either way, my holding asset for the, what is it, uh, $37.65. Sorry, let me get this straightened out here, folks. Apologies. So Vanco Holding is going to be credited for $36, or sorry, uh, $37.65. Then I click the plus sign. I now go down and I choose my, say, Huntington Bank checking account. Same thing, I do 37.65 because that's the deposit that I received on that date. Again, clicking done, add to batch. Again, show running balances showing that my Huntington Bank checking is higher by 37.65. That deposit should reconcile perfectly, okay? I could continue down and do the rest of those batches where the balance, but the goal is, of course, to get my Vanco holding account down to zero. So I would just simply go down and do the rest of those dates until I verify that the Vanco holding account is in fact at zero, at which point then I know that I've transferred, I've posted all my fees correctly, and I've uh, transferred the balances into my checking account to support the deposits as they, as they show up on my bank statement. All right, folks, so yeah, I would do post from there, and it allows me to print if I wish, but I would just continue to do those other April dates the same date. If the Vanco holding asset does not have a zero balance, then you've done something wrong. It's that simple, is you've put something into it too much or you haven't taken something out of it correctly. You've either not done a transfer correctly or you haven't done a fee. Something has gone wrong with regards to that, okay? And you would need to revisit, you know, the general ledger for the transactions or the transaction journal and cross-reference that with your Vanco report to find out what you did wrong and then go into browse and correct that.